Hello and welcome to this episode of T-Tech. On today's episode, we're setting up the Unbound DNS server on OpenBSD. I do hope you enjoy this one, and let's get into it. Hello and welcome to this episode of T-Tech. So today we're setting up the Unbound DNS server on OpenBSD. So the first thing, the first and only thing I've done to the server really, is uh, set up a static IP, a gateway, and DNS servers. So go ahead and do that before you follow along. We'll just verify that with a ping real quick. Okay, so yes, we're all connected. So the first thing you want to do is use su and get to root. You can configure do as, you can install unbound. I mean, <laughs> I mean sudo, um, and that will work fine. So what you want to do is go to ver unbound etsy. And in here, you'll see a configuration file, unbound.conf. So, the thing I would recommend first is to back this file up. And the reason is, unbound is part of OpenBSD's base. So, it, you would have to reinstall it from source, the unbound, to get the config file again, or you know, copy it offline or something. It's just best to have a backup. So, what we'll do is delete the original. And let's make a new one. So the first thing we need is a server clause. So we're going to say server colon, and this is a clause. We're going to enter down and just tab in. So this is everything related to the server. You have the clause, and the clause, and then underneath it, you have the parameters. The first thing we want is interface colon, and I. Uh, this uh, specifies which interfaces Unbound will listen on. If we have multiple, we can specify all zeros, or if we just want to anyway. If you put an IP of an interface specifically, it will only listen on that interface. We will put 0000, so it listens on all interfaces, just like that. After that, we want to restrict what networks can query this DNS server. So for that, we want to do access-control colon, and then we want to specify, you, you would either get with your network admin, if it's a bigger network, or if you are a consultant, or maybe it's a Soho network, you would know what the subnets are you need here. But basically, just understand if this is on a separate network and you have other subnets ac accessing it, you have to put access control entries for them. So we're going to put 192.168.00/24, and then the action is allow. So under that, we'll put access control, and we want to have the loop back in here for IPv4. And we also want the IPv6 loop back, colon, colon, one. And we want to deny any other IPv4 networks. You can also use refuse there as well. Um, and we want to deny any other IPv6 networks. Okay, just like that. So that's our basic server config. But now we have to tell it what DNS servers to ask if it doesn't know the answer to a query. So for that, we want forward dash zone, colon, and then we want to say name, colon, and then in quotes, do a dot. Okay? This means any domain name. And we want to put forward dash adder, colon, and then I'm going to put 4222, and also in addition, another one of 4221. And you can put other internal ones, you can put other public ones. It doesn't matter. This is just so if it doesn't have the answer in its cache, it asks another server. We're also going to put forward first to yes, and that's not a capital yes, lowercase. But that's basically what you need. And the forward first means it's not going to look up here for domain overrides. But we'll get to those in a second. Um, but for now, we're going to save this file. 
And to check it, we're going to do unbound dash check conf. All right, and the file is all all right. And uh, from here, let's enable unbound because the, this uh, will start it on boot. It's not enabled by default. And now we want to start that with rcctl start unbound. And now if we do net stat dash an and just pipe that to less, it is listening here on TCP port 53 and UDP port 53 as well. All right, let's uh, look for packets on EM0 in this case, UDP port 53. Okay, now I'm going to bring up what is my client right here. And the DNS server's IP is we're going to use dig. And we're going to use 192.168.01. We're going to start with google.com. All right, we queried. You see we do. I don't know if you can see it here. Let's bring this up. Um, it got an answer. It got the A record for google.com. And if we look, uh, what this means is the client came in here. The client is 195. It got the packet to port 53. And then at the IP of our new DNS server here, our new one. And the query says, what's the A record of google.com? The unbound DNS server does not know. So they become a client, essentially. This is what a recursive DNS query means. And then this DNS server asks the one on the internet, what's the A record of google.com? It knows that, and of course it knows that because of it learned it from the root name servers, that's the hierarchy of DNS, and uh, it uh, puts, it gives it back to Unbound here, our server, and now Unbound has the answer. So what Unbound does is then sends that answer back to the client. There's the A record. And the client gets the answer. Normally it will cache it though, and then we won't have that exchange afterward. Okay, uh, what we want to do though for the last thing real quick is talk about some overriding domains, why you do it. So we're going to go into that file real quick and just set one up first. Um, yeah. Okay, um, what we want to do Okay, we want to specify local dash zone colon and then in my case I'm going to specify some bad site dot com and you want to specify a type after that of static and under this we want to do local dash data and this local data is telling it what the record is so some bad site dot com is a is going to be an a in type record so an internet record and it's going to be an a record and it's going to point in this case to 127.0.0.1 now going back to basic networking you know that's the loopback and you, you know if you send packets to that you're only testing your tcp ip stack well you're not going to be able to get any usable response from that so this is why we're doing it though and you'll see in a sec and we're going to put a pointer record, which is reverse DNS, and it's going to say 127.0.0.1 is somebadsite.com. Okay, I will mention the entire file, make sure you have your colons in the right places and all of that, and make sure your server clauses are right. Don't put the declaration for domain override in forward zone, because it will just tell you syntax error. And it won't uh, won't work, and you won't figure out why until you, you uh, Google around and whatnot. But you have to have server, and then these parameters. So always check yourself with the same command. Unbound check conf. Now we're gonna restart the unbound. Okay, and we're going to do the same um, TCP dump. Now, the 
first thing we'll do is do the same query, okay? And uh, it did the same operation. But uh, if we do the query now for some bad site.com, the difference is it didn't have to query DNS servers on the internet. It just knew the answer from our uh, local zone, our DNS, our domain override. And it has the ARAC, gets the query. It has that in its in its file and just sends back the A record is loopback. And obviously that's the answer we get as a client and it's not gonna go anywhere. So the reason um, domain overrides are important are quite a few things. Um, one that I've dealt with is spam prevention in email servers. When an, an email server gets a bad domain and emails coming from it, if it looks for that, it will actually send back loopback, so it can't connect to it, and it's spam in that case. Um, that's one um, use for doing this. Two other uses are um, something called split DNS. Okay, what split DNS is is it's important in uh, Soho networks that have on-prem servers or enterprise networks, etc. The purpose is when you have computers on the inside of the network that you have this you want to access the same service the outside is accessing what happens is they query the server and if they're on the inside they get the private IP address of the server what happens to people on the outside is they just query a DNS server on the internet and they get the public IP address of that network so in that way your employees don't have to change the domain name or use an IP address in their software even if they're on the outside and then come into work they don't have to change any of that configuration the last one is simply blocking access to websites not even just websites any domain based thing even apps on phones so that would be another use for this but with all that, that's how we set up a very basic Unbound configuration on OpenBSD. And uh, as always, it's Tyler with T-Tech. I really do hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for viewing, and have a very nice day.